Hello, I'm Diana Loderhose. I'm the International Features Editor here at Deadline. We are in our Red Sea studio here in Jeddah for the Red Sea Film Festival. I'm delighted to be here today with the wonderful Catherine Martin, multi-hyphenate, <laughs> set designer, costume designer, production designer, a lot of different hats. That's right. I wear a lot of hats, <laughs> but I seldom get any respect for it with my children at oh. home. Oh, I know. I was going to say, you, Academy Awards is probably a good respect. A no, not really. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about, you've done some incredible product, big productions, costumes, sets, Moulin Rouge, Great Gatsby, um, Romeo and Juliet. Tell me, how, which of these was probably, when you reflect on this, would you kind of consider as being the most challenging? Look, I think every new project is the most challenging because I've had the great pleasure of working with Baz for 30 years and every time we start something new it's like going to you know doing my doctorate and film studies all over again because there'll be something I don't expect or it's the perspective is really surprising mm -hmm. on Elvis I stupidly thought oh this will be really interesting because instead of a created world I'll get to flex a kind of technical muscle where you are basically recreating things. But I completely underestimated just how challenging the process would be in terms of the scale of the film, in terms of the number of costumes. There were 9,000 background outfits. That's like undies, shoes, everything. So I underestimated that. And also the challenges of finding a way, because in the process with Austin and Baz, the challenge really, Baz put it brilliantly, he said, we've got to be, find the centre of the character. This can't become like a, um, just a Halloween costume of Elvis. Mm -hmm. It's got to be, you've got to find the essence of the person. And it's not about slavish reproduction it's about really connecting with the humanity of Elvis and so you know that required um, you know that therefore it wasn't just a slavish reinterpretation of every single detail so it's like no no like every project mm -hmm. that I do is always more challenging than I think and to bring it back to children I think it's just like you know if you knew what you, you know, you forget kind of the, the struggles of childbirth or whatever in order to be able to do it again. And I think the same thing with filmmaking, you kind of forget that it's always a challenge because in that way, you You'd never make another movie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so with Elvis though, how do you, because cause with Elvis, there's so many photos, there's so much material out there, there's so many, there's just must have been so much you had to work from to research. How did you kind of whittle down which ones to, you know, because sometimes if the, you know, it's like that thing of, I always find when I go back to the America, I live in England now, and I go into the grocery stores, there's so much stuff in the grocery stores that I end up leaving without getting anything because there's too much choice. In that kind of way, how is that when you kind of were approaching Elvis? Well, the thing about Elvis is that every day new images surface on the internet and we spent years and Baz researched so assiduously and Austin is a world expert um, and he has looked high and low for images. I think it's that it's the guidance of those collaborating key creatives it's Baz's vision that guides you to, to and is part of the process of selecting the images that end up being you know key ones in the movie mm -hmm. um, and certainly you take your lead from the actors too um, because they'll have a perspective on how they want to portray the character but you know Baz always as a visualist has a really strong perspective on what he's trying to pursue in terms of the visuals in the movie. So he'll show you what to him are the key images and then you start to chase things that are gonna support whatever he wants in terms of the look, mm -hmm. be it a character or a set. 
How does it, you guys have worked together for so long, and you're both very creative, obviously. How does that working relationship kind of transpire? You know, do you, do you find there's points where you have big creative differences, or it must, you know, does it work really well? Have there been times where it's been challenging? Look, there are always times when it's challenging in any work-related relationship. There are always challenges and difficulties, but overwhelmingly, it's incredibly positive because Baz is a collaborator whether you're the music supervisor or the editor or the visual effects supervisor or the production designer or a choreographer, he sees you as part of the orchestra that's helping to tell the story. So the great luxury of working on a, on a Baz movie is that there's a lot of resources put into what you do. And I don't mean money. I mean time and care mm -hmm. and consideration. And so that's a great privilege because you feel part of a team, you feel important, you feel that you're all walking down the same road together, mm -hmm. you know, dragging the same wagon. Yes, sometimes you might have differences of opinion, but um, Baz is a great believer in consensus. So it's about making sure everybody's convinced of the, you know, the direction we're going in. And the other thing is too, at the end of the day, he is the director. Mm -hmm. So whoever you work for, there's a boss and ultimately what he says goes. <laughs> but usually we're all convinced that that is the right way to go anyway. Or if we're not at the very moment, invariably when you see it projected you go oh you were right <laughs> <laughs> so it's your first time here in Jeddah tell me a little bit about your uh, you know your your first impressions of being here look I'm loving the festival it's super exciting because all the movies come from Asia Africa and the Middle East and I get this overwhelming sensation of the excitement of youth because in our Occidental countries, we just seem to be getting older and older, our populations. And in these countries, the populations are incredibly young. And as I get older, I ha have so much respect and feel so inspired by the energy of youth and the um, great passion to tell their stories. And I think at a time in the world where there is so so much division, so much conflict, and to see all these passionate young people telling diverse stories, culturally exchanging. And in that cultural exchange, you realise, or realise again, that we have so much more in common as, uh, as humans than we do differences. And you know, I think particularly when you're a parent, this idea of, 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 of the youth taking on the mantle and continuing this human expression, you know, I just think culture and the telling of stories is just so vital to what it is to be human. Catherine, thank you so much for being here today. It was a pleasure you're speaking with you. You're very welcome. Thank